Good evening, everyone. Well, welcome again. Um, we're just going to give another minute while everybody's logging in to the webinar. It looks like we have a great uh, audience tonight, so we're excited to hear your questions and answer your questions. Well, good evening. Um, it looks like most everybody's in, um, and we might have a few more that um, start logging in in a few minutes, but we can um, keep adding as we go. Good evening again. My name is Kate and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Maine Maritime Academy. I'm joined with a great group of students who will be introducing themselves in a second, um, but I'm also joined with my coworker, Elizabeth Allaby, who is an admissions counselor and the two of us will be co-hosting this evening. Um, just a few things to keep in mind as we go about this webinar. We can see each other, but we can't see you. So please interact um, with the chat function and the Q&A function. Use that to your advantage. You can talk to anybody individually or pose a question to the group. We have a fantastic list of pre-submitted questions we're gonna be getting to, but if you feel that you've pre-submitted a question and we might not be able to get to it, um, feel free to throw it into our um, panelists. They are gonna be looking at the question and answer and at the chat function so that we can get the answers to you that you need. Um, this, is, this is for you. So um, before I take up all this time blabbing away, I'm gonna turn it over to our students to introduce themselves. So I'm gonna start um, in the order that my screen is in and Amber, you're up first. <laughs> So my name is Amber. I'm a junior in the Marine Science and Small Vessel Operation uh, major. Uh, and I chose MMA because I love the, the small campus, how close everyone is, um, and all the hands-on work that we get here. That's fantastic. Thanks. Sarah Gilmore, you are next. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarah Gilmore. I am a senior in the International Business or IBL major. Um, and I chose MMA because of the job opportunities and the IBL curriculum in itself. Great, thank you. Ashlyn, you are up next. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, <laughs> my name is Ashlyn Royal. I'm in the Marine Biology and Small Vessel Operations Program. I am a senior this year, and I chose MMA because of the specific program and because it offers this dual major program. Yeah, that dual major is really important. Patrick, I'm going to turn to you next. Hi, my name is Patrick Martin. Uh, I'm a junior in the Vessel Operations and Technology program. Uh, I chose MMA because I was really drawn to the hands-on uh, atmosphere here that MMA offers. Great, yeah. We've got a lot of hands-on answers, which is um, really what we shine in. Um, Corey, I'm gonna turn to you next. Hi everyone, my name's Corey. I'm a senior in MTO from Springvale, Maine. I chose MMA because uh, four years ago, boats sounded pretty cool and uh, I'm still here. <laughs> Just for those that are watching, um, MTO is Marine Transportation Operations. So Corey's going to be getting that third mate unlimited license. Um, actually, a couple months here, not even. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we got to get you to pass that exam, but you'll do it. You'll do great. Um, Nick, you're up next. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Nick Lewis. I'm originally from Canadensis, Pennsylvania. And uh, I came to MMA just because I've heard so many great things about the school from uh, Mariners that I uh, worked with uh, in the Navy. So a great reputation and uh, I immediately jumped on, on board uh, as soon as I left. Great. Ryan, I'm going to turn to you. Uh, yeah, my name is Ryan Reed. Uh, I am a Navy vet, but I'm also in the Vessel Operations Technologies Program. I'm also minoring in the Ox Sail program, uh, which MMA is unique in that we're the only school that has one. So if you want to learn about sailing, whether it's modern modern sailboats or um, traditionally rigged ships, then this is kind of the place to do it. So that's why I'm here. Great. Yeah, that sailing aspect, we're going to be turning to that here um, as we go into the program a little bit more. Um, Roxana, can you uh, finish her up here? Yes, so I'm Roxana McGregor. I am a sophomore in international business and logistics, and I am minoring in environmental studies. And I'm from Eastport, Maine. 
I think I chose MMA because I came to the open house and it was so easy to quickly connect with the teachers and I was blown away by the presentation the business um, administration had to give. Yeah, well, great. Um, so I'm going to throw the first question out at everybody. And um, the, the question is, what things do you do outside of the classroom? Um, so this could be a long one because I know you guys all do so much and so many interesting things. But what do you do outside of the classroom that um, might be kind of unique to MMA or that really has made your experience very unique at MMA? And so maybe let's just go in that same order. Um, Amber, I'm gonna throw it to you. And then Sarah, you can follow after that. Um, well, so for me, it probably has to be the scuba programs that's offered here. Um, so you can get your basic all the way up to your diving master, um, which I think is pretty awesome. I've pretty much gone through all of the classes. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of my favorite things that I've been able to do here. Uh, for me, uh, I'm the president of two clubs. One is the Student Business Logistics Association, uh, which basically is made to help improve all students' professional background. So we do a lot of resume reviews. We work a lot with IBL professors who have that experience. So having that opportunity to help improve other students is fantastic. And then the other club that we actually just started this year is the Environmental Action Club. Um, and that's what I think makes MMA very unique because it's so new. So we can kind of mold it to what the school needs, but we've also worked really, really closely with the casting community. Um, and I think that's another thing that makes MMA so unique is that you have such a close relationship with the small town that it's that the school is placed right in the middle in, um, that there's so many amazing opportunities to help volunteer and improve the community. Ashlyn, I'm going to turn to you next. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was my turn. So yeah. <laughs> I'll get it down eventually, I swear. <laughs> um, so I would agree with Sarah as there's so many ways to get involved in the community and in, at the school. I'm a part of swim team. I help out with the yacht club on their social media. I love going out down to the yacht club and utilizing the waterfront. Um, all the alumni I've ever interacted with, they said that's the one thing they regret most is not utilizing as much of the waterfront as they can. So I've been trying to do my best to get that experience in. And it's really great. There's a bunch of great people down there and they can teach you just about anything. It's true. Patrick? I was gonna say, I think that's me. Um, <laughs> working off of what Ashlyn said, um, I'm the vice commodore for the yacht club. Um, and we have a few programs that we uh, take part in each year. Uh, fall semester, we have supplemental seamanship, which is uh, four to six, Monday through Thursday. Um, any student of any major can come down, uh, learn how to drive a boat. You don't need any experience. Um, and if you put in the, the work and the hours, you can uh, get signed off to be able to drive the boats. And uh, so I am a junior now. Um, so I uh, actually teach kids that um, that come to supplemental steamship on how to drive the boats. And um, I'd say that's definitely my favorite part of uh, Maine Maritime is how accessible the waterfront is. Uh, there, we come down on weekends, we do weekend trips, we do open waterfronts on Saturdays. Uh, we take out one of the many boats that the school has, um, a pretty good variety of boats as well and we just motor around. That, I'm so glad you mentioned that supplemental seamanship, Patrick, and the waterfront, Ashlyn. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but that supplemental seamanship is open to students of any major, correct? You don't have to be in that licensing program. Exactly, and everyone gets the same treatment. Everyone gets to drive the boat just as much, and yeah, it's really fun. Everyone comes, we actually have uh, a guy, a person who is in the engineering major who is one of our higher up boat drivers that's so cool and it's the, it's the coolest playground ever <laughs> um corey you're up yeah so uh my my involvement is is uh off campus quite a bit i'm a lieutenant and a, an emergency medical technician with casting fire rescue department uh, as well as a, a, an emt for peninsula ambulance which is uh it serves seven towns here on the blue hill peninsula um 
I've been doing that since I was a freshman. And that's kind of, that kind of is what led into my, uh, into my regimental leadership role, which as the cadet chief mate, uh, when we go out on the ship for a uh, training cruise, I'm in charge of all fire and emergency response on the vessel. It's unbelievable what the responsibilities that our students take on. Um, and it's been actually really great hearing all the things that you guys are in because we knew some of them, but we didn't know necessarily all of them. So um, Nick, can you take it on? Absolutely. So uh, for me, I am uh, involved with the, uh, the non-traditional student association. Um, I would, uh, I've been the uh, president uh, since it started. It's a fairly new club uh, that uh, is here on campus to address the unique uh, needs for non-traditional students. So students that live off campus, um, students that, you know, might be working a job, um, you know, MMA isn't, you know, it's kind of almost like a part-time thing in a way. Uh, so what we do is we try to uh, work and provide resources for uh, students that, you know, they may have children, um, you know, they're married, you know, again, they have a life outside of MMA. So um, I've been involved with that. Um, as well as uh, just like Corey, I'm also uh, within the regiment, I'm the current cadet master for the class of 2022. So uh, right now I'm working to get the current freshman, the fourth class within the regiment ready for their first training cruise. So if you, um, it's kind of right behind Elizabeth there on her background, there is the training ship. Uh, but if you can kind of see right there, but uh, in the summer, uh, they'll be going out on their first cruise and it's a really fun time. You get to really see a, a ship in action and uh, experience seat for the first time. So that's my part here on campus and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, it, it is a fantastic group and we're um, getting more and more non-traditional students every year from all different backgrounds. So it's a really important dynamic that has been developed here on campus. Um, Ryan, I'm gonna turn to you next, but I'm also going to uh, throw this question that's in the chat to you while you're talking. And can you a little, elaborate a little bit more on the OxSail program um, that you had mentioned during your introduction? Absolutely. So the OxSail program is uh, kind of cool because, you know, in addition to whatever your major is, it um, gives you a trajectory uh, to get your OxSail endorsements on your license. Um, so it starts off with, you know, your freshman year, you're going to take uh, basic sailing um, or intro to sailing. Your second fall, you're going to do intermediate sailing. And then your third fall, you're going to do advanced sailing. And it progresses up uh, from, you know, bigger and bigger boats. Uh, you're going to do, you know, all sorts of maneuvering um, uh, exercises from anything from the coal gates all the way up until uh, on the Bowden in itself. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Bowden is um, the schooner that we have here on campus. It's you know turning 100 years old this year uh, on April 6th, actually. Uh, so that's a really cool um, you know utility that we have here. Um, she's been to the Arctic, I think, 17 times now. Um, for since the school has got her in the late eighties. Uh, but you're also gonna learn other things uh, like rigging techniques, uh, building sails uh, uh, for both modern and uh, traditional vessels and uh, yes, uh, weather routing, uh, celestial navigation, uh, terrestrial navigation, uh, Captain Jurgensen is also talking about doing land navigation classes coming up, potentially. Um, all sorts of really fun classes that are kind of unique to that minor. Um, but the other cool thing is we also got the Bowden, and we also have a smaller uh, compact schooner called the Puritan. Uh, so we actually have two wooden vessels on campus, and uh, we're actually in the process of planning the next Arctic cruise. So that's an opportunity for all incoming students um, to be a part of that planning process and to potentially go north um, and cross the Arctic Circle as part of one of your co-ops. Um, and I forgot to mention also that I'm actually the president of the Schooner Club. And we, we have a lot of fun. We hang out down on the waterfront with the Yacht Club all the time. Uh, we're planning a bunch of 
hopefully weekend trips in the fall based on co- you know whether or not we're open to COVID. And uh, we sail, try to sail every day of the week um, outside of Sundays. So Saturdays, we usually go out for a really long sail or a weekend trip, that kind of thing. And lots and lots of fun maintenance, a lot of shenanigans down the shop. So it's a, it's a fun little group. Uh, this weekend, we're also gonna go do like a wood turning um, little event with a um, local artist here in Castine. And, uh, you know, we try to incorporate local artists and um, people who are very into traditional sailing to come give talks and demonstrations and lectures all throughout the year. The Bowdoin is unbelievable. Um, and so there's actually been a couple of questions coming in through the Q&A, Ryan. So if you just want to sure. keep an eye out to that, um, we... We love our hundred year old boat that has been to the Arctic. Um, and so as an incoming student, you might get that opportunity to cross Arctic circle, which would be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, well, I guess if you're going out to sea, you might have that other opportunity other times, but um, for, for the most of the world, um, it is a once in a lifetime to cross it under sail on a hundred year old vessel. So um, Roxana, please take it away. Yes, um, I came from a really small high school where it was kind of easy to get involved. So I was a little nervous coming to college where I might not be able to get involved in many things, but I've noticed quite the opposite. It's been really easy to get involved. Um, I am a part of student government. I am a member of the swim team. I played lacrosse for a season because they didn't have enough girls to play. I There's so many opportunities like that. Um, I sit on a lot of committees, which I feel like I wouldn't get as easy of a chance to do if I was at a bigger school. Um, I sit on the Title IX committee, the Campus Culture Committee, and I think there's another one that I'm forgetting. A lot of committees, but I don't think I would get that chance at a school other than MMA. I think that's probably true. You might not know it, but Roxy does run Maine Maritime Academy. Um, I wanted to make sure, did we get through everyone? I had seen a couple of questions come in that I just want to answer as an admissions person. Uh, yes, we are currently having tours on campus. In just a moment, I'll throw our visit calendar in the chat so you can see that link. Um, for the next two weeks, we can offer you a campus tour with a student. And after that, our students are off to the four corners of the world. Well, maybe not so far um, in these COVID times, but uh, so we won't be able to have that same opportunity to connect you with a student while you're here on campus, but you will be uh, with Kate, myself, or someone else in admissions who will give you that campus tour. But yes, definitely come visit. We want to show off our campus to you. Um, and this is why we're doing events like this tonight to make sure that you get a taste of that student sort of perspective. Because um, we can tell you all day long how great Maine Maritime Academy is, but you've got to make that choice. Is this the right fit for me at the end of the day? The other thing I wanted to say, um, if you like events like this, we're going to do a whole lot more on the day of our open house, Saturday, April 3rd, two weeks from two days from now. I made that really confusing. Three days before the Bowdoin's birthday, if you were really paying attention. Um, so definitely check out our virtual open house and we'll be sending you more information. But uh, with that said, I sort of wanted to um, focus on Castine. I know we've spoken a lot about what things are like extracurricular wise at Maine Maritime. Corey spoke a little bit about what he does for the Castine community, but I'm gonna give you guys kind of a tricky one. <laughs> uh, what is something that you love about being in Castine, Maine? It is a small sort of villagey type of town. Um, Kate, what do you think? 1,500, 2,000 year round residents most. <laughs> Um, so it's really kind of a quirky historical community. So what's one thing you love about Castine and what's one thing that, um, you know, maybe you find a little bit challenging. So, and the reason I'm asking you sort of both those sides of the question is uh, Castine may or may not be for everybody. And, you know, we want you to come check us out, but if you're not able to, you can sort of see it through these eyes. Uh, this is gonna throw you all off. <laughs> I'm gonna go backwards and my screen is different than Kate. So Roxy, I'm gonna throw it to you first. Okay, I think one thing that I love would be um, the sunsets. Um, there's a couple different spots in Castine that the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. Um, and one thing that I dislike. 
One thing you find challenging. Challenging, sorry. One thing I find challenging, it is a little further away from things than maybe where other people come from. I'm from Maine anyways. I'm from down East Maine. So there's even less there than there is here. So I'm a little used to it, but it can be challenging sometimes not going to college in a huge town, but it can be nice too. Thank you. And then I'm going to throw it over to you, Corey. Uh, yeah. I, Cassian is a very unique community. Uh, when, when we got sent home last year, uh, because of uh, the beginning of the pandemic, myself and, uh, and a couple other students that are, that are uh, EMTs and firefighters in town, we had year-round leases, so we were actually able to stay in town and, uh, and work and provide medical and firefighting coverage for the town. And it was an opportunity that I, I never thought I'd get because I, I heard a lot of stories about how Castine was in the summer because uh, it, it tends to be an effluent town, especially in the summers. There's a lot of summer residents that come in. And although the pandemic uh, challenged a lot of travel as far as the restrictions go, uh, I, I got to see Cassidy in a different light than a lot of other students get to. And I, I really appreciated that. It's, a, it's got a very quirky history as far as uh, like the Revolutionary War goes. Something a lot of people don't know is the fact that uh, it, here in, here in Castine was uh, the United States, uh, it's, it was their greatest naval loss up until Pearl Harbor. It was a Penobscot expedition. So one of the things when I was uh, when I was here over the summer, I, I got a couple books and I read around town and got to actually see the forts they were talking about and all that stuff. And so if, if you end up up here, uh, definitely take a look at the history because that's one of my favorite parts of the town. Anything you find not so favorite? Sometimes the community is very small and uh, being as visible as as I as I tend to be here. Uh, I can't get away with much, you know, I sometimes uh, it doesn't take much to get the fire chief to give me a phone call and uh, and ask what's going on, you know, so and so my car speeding up the road or something. I find going to the post office, I can't get in and out quickly because it's sort of a nice problem to have everybody knows you and especially for Corey as part of the fire department. He is a high profile type of guy. How about you, Nick? Thank you. For being a it's kind of hard to really pick one thing. Um, there's a lot I really do love about Castine. Um, I think unlike you know, most of the people here, I'm I'm not really from Maine. I'm from Pennsylvania, but I grew up in a rural area. Um, so I think being in Castine really kind of struck home to me. And uh, I've been able to uh, get to know a lot of the people here in town. And I almost feel like this is almost a second home to me. Um, the water I and mean, I think it's um, when I applied to MMA I didn't apply to anywhere else it was here or nowhere and I'm, I'm so grateful I'm here um, you know I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere else in the world um, so it's a great town there's a um, if you're an outdoorsman and you love the water this is definitely the place to be because um, there's plenty of places to hike hike to and uh, um, and get out in the water uh, but the one thing that uh, I think is kind of challenging, uh, just like how Roxana mentioned it, is that um, it is, is kind of a remote location. Uh, it's on the end of the earth here uh, on the peninsula. So getting to places can kind of be a, a bit of a drive, like 45 minutes to Ellsworth or 45 minutes to Bangor. Um, you know, that's where all the restaurants and the malls are, the stores. So, but it's quiet here and it's it really is a, a nice location to be at. Thank you, that helps. I have heard some students tell me it's very nice to be able to focus on studies. So it sort of goes hand in hand with that. Ryan, I'm gonna throw it over to you. What do you uh, really enjoy about Castine and find a little bit challenging? Um, I really like that it's a small town and nice and quiet. Uh, I also kind of come from a small town background, but if you haven't guessed uh, from my background, I'm pretty, fond of the water and sharks. Uh, I made my former living uh, diving with big animals and chasing you know, fun expeditions around the world uh, in the water. So I like being, having the water right outside my front door um, on the weekends. If I'm not on the boat and sailing or you know, in another boat sailing, I'm usually under the water in one form or fashion. Yes, even this time of year. And uh, 
yeah, it's, it's really nice because no matter which direction you go, um, there's lots and lots of water access, lots of topography under the water. Um, and then like was said in the last, uh, the last guy said, there's a lot, a lot of hiking around here. I mean, Acadia is 45 minutes in that, to an hour away, depending on which part of the island you want to go to. Um, uh, Carabasset Valley is, you know, a little over an hour and a half away. There's lots of lots of mountain biking over there. Sunday, uh, was it Sunday River? No, that's, uh, anyways, big ski resort, lots of mountains. But I love uh, Sunday River. They're all over there in the Carabasset yeah, Valley. Uh, um, and then uh, Baxter State Park isn't too far away. That's the end of the um, Appalachia Trail. So you know, lots and lots of really good activities around here. And I spend all my time outside. So it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Sometimes it's a little distracting from schoolwork. Ah, oh, shoot. Here I am focusing the, the schoolwork. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you're still scuba diving. One thing I noticed about all our students all the time you're always outside. There is no such thing as bad weather, just bad gear. That's kind of the proof. Is exactly. In the yeah. Yep. I'm going to throw it up to you there, Ashlyn. Okay. Um, so I think for me, my experience at MMA is a little unique and different because um, when I was growing up, I bounced around from place to place and I never stayed in a school for longer than three years. So this is the first time that I've actually been at a school for four years. That's never happened to me before. And I also, uh, my senior year of high school, I graduated from Bucksport. So I just kind of went right over here to Castine. And so I'm close to family. And so this is a really nice experience. Um, challenges wise, I can understand where people um, aren't able to get to the places that they normally would hang out, hang out at like stores and movies. And it's quite a bit of a drive, but there's also a lot of good things about a small campus. Thank you. I'm going to pass it on to Patrick. Well, I, um, when you first were asking uh, the first question, what we really liked about the uh, casting, the first thing that I thought of was um, I loved to be able to look out this window and see the beautiful sunsets at night. Um, it was, it's definitely one of the best things is you have a, a decently long, but uh, good class day. You sit down and you watch the sunset um, while you're playing video. Uh, whatever you do in your pastime, um, and I definitely would say that um, my other favorite thing that I really like about Castine is that we always have a sea breeze uh, blowing up the bay. And although in the winter it gets really cold, um, when it's fall, it's a, a nice refreshing breeze that's coming up off the water and sort of cooling off the campus. Um, that sort of probably is a little bit exclusive to a lot because I'm from, I always feel the, the uh, air coming up over the land and rare. But uh, one of the challenging things for me is uh, also definitely how um, it is a distance to get to things. Um, like I said, I'm from Portland. So I grew up basically within a five minute walk of uh, most things, grocery store, gas station, everything. Um, but being in casting, um, it's a good challenge to have to have something that's 20 minutes away, 25 minutes away, Bucksport. Um, and it sort of challenges me to stay on campus, um, interact with other friends, uh, sort of visit the local businesses and, uh, yeah, stay on campus more, definitely. Great answer. Thank you. And you might have broken up just a little bit, so I just wanted to highlight one of his favorite things is sort of that that wind, um, which definitely comes into play heavily at the waterfront if you're into any type of sailing whatsoever. If you're like me, a kayaker, you don't love it, but <laughs> for all of our sailing folks, then that's really nice. All right, Sarah, I've got you up next. Thank you, Sarah's answering. I'm, I'm, I'm on the chat board answering questions. That's great. So. <laughs> That's what it's, it's this beautiful chaos. So. <laughs> I have to say one thing that I love about Castine, um, a, a lot of, I had a question about what is your policy about cars on campus? And if that's okay, if I just answer that, because that is part yeah. of my question. Traditionally, freshman students are not allowed cars on campus. And that is because uh, the campus is small enough and there's only a limited number of student parking spaces. 
um, unless you have a special exemption to get one, such as if you are a non-traditional student. Um, once you become a sophomore, you are permitted a car. Uh, you do have to pay a parking pass. That's how we're able to maintain the parking, the, the, the parking lot. Um, so I guess one thing that I do love about Castine is um, definitely as a freshman, if you're bored and there's nothing to do, I would absolutely explore the town. Even in the wintertime when you think that there's nothing going on, the year round people hold, you know, they have coffee shops, they have bookstores um, and even getting involved with the town hall. I know that um, not even before the club even started for the environmental action club, I would go to the town hall and I'd help pick up trash. They're always looking for volunteers. There's always things to do. And you'd be surprised, you know, if you, um, if you treat the people of casting with kindness, they're going to do that to you, especially in times of need. And we saw that with the COVID, um, when the COVID pandemic really hit us in March. Um, one thing that I say would, I have to agree, it's, it is the isolation sometimes. Um, but to counter that, uh, campus Activities Board has a lot of events that they always plan on campus. So um, they really try to prevent you. It's, it, it can be very easy sometimes to kind of get stuck in your dorm the whole day, playing video games and not really want to get out. So Campus Activities Board really tries to prevent that. And they host movie nights and different events. Uh, with COVID, things have been a little bit different, but they're still trying to maintain that um, uh, student interaction. And that's really important. So. Does yes. Thank you very much. Certainly COVID has changed some of our operations a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll throw that out as a question to you guys in just a moment. Um, so not everything is up and running exactly how you'd want it to be, but certainly the things that uh, are important to our students, the hands-on labs, things like that are. Um, but like I said, we'll circle back to that. My last, my last one, Amber, thank you for waiting patiently. Yeah, so actually I was just, uh, I actually just answered this question in the chat. Um, and I was just thinking about this. This is the first semester I'm not spending my weekends scuba diving all the time. Um, so that's how I sp actually spend most of my time here is with whether it's in the diving classes or helping out with the diving classes. Um, most of my weekends are spent that. And then in the winter, if I'm not in my room studying, I'm probably on the mountain skiing. But yeah. Awesome. You guys do such amazing things. I wish I could experience this all over again <laughs> and be in your shoes. Um, I wanted to transition um, our topic just a little bit onto athletics. We've had a couple of pre-submitted questions about athletics. And so, the, so those of you that are on sports teams, I want you to talk about a little bit about what it was like to join the sports team, what advice do you have for students that are thinking about becoming a college athlete, um, time commitments, where did you even start? Um, and where was that in that process? Was it hard to be on the sports team? Um, who did you talk to initially? So I'm going to just throw it out there. Who wants to start? Amber. <laughs> yeah, so freshman year, I was on the soccer team. Um, so I did do that, but, and then I was actually also on the swim team as well, too. So I'm kind of like, along with Ashlyn, we're like the first like official members of the MMA swim team because it wasn't officially a team um, until my freshman year. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, everyone was really great. Um, I actually got recruited for swimming by the athletic director, which was how I found out about it. Um, the team's amazing. I love everyone on the team. Um, I'm actually taking this semester off though, because it is time consuming. Um, you have practices five days a week. Um, and that's both in, at the end of the fall semester and then through the um, spring semester about halfway into the spring semester is when the season ends. Um, and in a normal season, we're gone almost every weekend that meets traveling. Um, places. So it, it does get to be pretty time consuming, but the coaches are really understanding when it comes to school and they push school first, um, especially our coach now. If you don't do well in your classes, you're he's going to say something to you and, and you won't be able to practice until you bring your grades up. 
I think Amber, that's a great point to make. Um, our athletic coaches know that academics comes first. You've come to the school because you're coming for an education. Um, so our athletes have some of the highest GPAs on campus because they know that that's um, really important part of their transition here into, uh, into the school. Anybody else wanted to add to the athletic question? Oh, Roxana, yes. Um, I am also on the swim team um, with Amber. I played on the lacrosse team too. Like I said before, they didn't have enough girls. One of my friends was on the team, asked if I joined. I had never played lacrosse before. I wasn't that good, but um, I was filling a spot on a team where they might not be able to play because they didn't have enough, but I did stick with the swim team. Um, something I wanted to highlight, like Amber said, they are really understanding. Um, over, when was it? Christmas break, I... Um, caught COVID um, and I came back this semester and I wasn't able to practice, but the athletic trainers um, set me up an appointment at the Blue Hill Hospital to go get an EKG to make sure everything was fine before I could start practicing again. And they were really helpful in being there for me medically and um, being a great um, person to lean on when I needed somebody. And they have been totally understanding in me missing out on this semester to figure stuff out. Yeah, we, we are in a bizarre world everyone is. Um, and so some of the things that you might be hearing um, from our student athletes tonight will be different next fall or next spring. We're hoping that things will you know, transition back a little bit more towards what we consider normal. Um, but I don't have that magic eight ball. Um, anybody else wanted to add into that athletic question? Great, great. Um, Elizabeth, did you have a question here? I did. Now I kind of wanted to circle back to COVID. I know we've sort of skirted around it, um, but we're at college. It's a pandemic. How are things different? How's it going for you? Um, this one, I don't know if we'll have eight very specific different answers, but if you'd like to go for it, I'll, I'll open it up. And I'll start with Nick. He was smiling. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so it was just, you know, how, how things have been different. Um, it's, um, it's quiet. And, you know, it, um, the, uh, the school brings a lot of life to the community here. And when we're remote, um, it definitely, it kind of puts a damper on things. But I think uh, the school has done, the school has done a lot uh, to, really improve, you know, the quality of life here. Um, you know, obviously this is just a very challenging time for everyone. Um, and, you know, although we have to stay socially distanced, you know, I think, you know, through the school, you know, we've still been able to come together. Um, you know, that I kind of circling back to what I was mentioning about, you know, being outdoors, um, you know, really don't need a social distance too much for that. You, know, you can still go on hikes with friends so long as you keep your spacing, but, um, you know, I think that's the, again, the beautiful thing is, you know, you're outdoors, you're out getting that fresh air, um, and you're still able, you know, to get around and do, uh, do a lot of things. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, just like everyone else that will return to a normal life fairly certain, you know, fairly, fairly soon. Um, and, you know, with vaccines rolling out, you know, it sounds like it's going to be sooner rather than later. Um, so, um, again, just, you know, bottom line, it's definitely been challenging, but, um, I think we're all, you know, we're, we're doing great. You know, we're all focused on graduating and getting out of here and going on to our, uh, our, uh, careers. So, um, a little bit later, someone was asking about ROTC. Um, and I was hoping I can address that. Go for it. But we'll, but we'll go, I, I can come back to it. So we wanted to keep going. Perfect. I'll make sure I come back. Cause there were a few questions about that as well. Um, Anybody else? How has COVID sort of changed what your schedule is like? Sarah, I saw you put an answer in. Do you want to speak to IBL? Absolutely. Um, for anyone who is viewing who's interested in doing IBL, um, I will say I'm very grateful that our major is flexible enough that um, we, if possible, we could go all virtual if needed. Um, but luckily, we're all back on campus. Um, 
Some teachers do maintain a hybrid structure. So for example, if you have a Tuesday, Thursday class, Tuesday would be virtual um, via Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And then Thursdays would be in person in a classroom that is safe and large enough to have all, everyone in my class. I will tell you, uh, there are 32 seniors in the IBL class. It's a very uh, small class size, which is great if you're interested in that. Um, they know you by name pretty much by the end of the first week of freshman year. <laughs> uh, so that is something that um, at first it was a little difficult to get used to. You have to, you have to learn a whole new set of etiquette rules with Zoom etiquette. However, with the direction that the world is turning anyway, a lot of companies are already starting to make a lot of jobs virtual. So I think in a way you're actually gaining this really important skill of how to act and how to work virtually. So um, yeah, I, I, I ha I'd have to say overall hybrid classes have been the biggest change. Um, however, the quality of the content for lectures has not changed at all. It is, it is still very informative um, and to the point. And, it's, it, and a lot of our teachers find a way to be hands-on. And I think that's with every major. How about for the ocean studies students? How have your classes changed? Are you having in-person labs? Are you online? Are you, you know, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so our professors are rock stars. I just wanna say that they've done such an awesome job of um, being able, I mean, I think it also helps too that our, I think the ocean studies is the smallest major on campus. Um, my class, which is the junior class, which combines the marine bio students, um, the marine science, and then those of us that are doing the dual majors, there is a total of, I think, 11 of us. Um, and then the senior class is even smaller than that. Uh, so it's, I think that, that also helps too with being able to be in the classroom more um, because we are such a small number, um, but yeah, no, they've done a really great job at uh, really working with uh, all of the online stuff, working with Canvas, making sure we know what we need to do, when we need to do it. Um, probably the biggest thing for me right now is senior research, because um, I actually just finished a report for my pilot study uh, that was due today. Um, yeah, so big accomplishment, but that's probably been the hardest thing was get finding times to get into the lab because we are on that 12 week semester. Um, so we're doing the same amount of work for senior research that we would do in a 15 week semester, but in 12 weeks. Uh, so that's probably been the biggest struggle for me. I was curious if you would mention that shortened semester. So we have shortened our semesters. They've gone from 14 weeks plus a finals to 12 weeks plus a finals. And the reason for that um, in the fall was purely we're trying to beat out Thanksgiving holidays. How do we send all our students home and bring them back safely? Uh, in the spring right now, we're still maintaining the schedule so we can accommodate all of our students' summer opportunities um, and have enough physical calendar days for those getting the licenses to have uh, those days out at sea for our training cruises to run for those cadet shipping um, co-op internship opportunities. So I'm sure it feels like a marathon for these guys. I wanted to kick it over to either Ryan or Patrick. How are things going in BOT COVID wise? Um, I'd, I'd say pretty similar. Uh, you know, the classes that are able to be online, so mostly our core classes, um, a lot of those run pretty hybrid. Um, like right now, my humanities class is 100% online. We're all on Zoom uh, once a week, but it definitely makes it really hard for the labs. Um, in the VOT, a large portion of all of our classes are lab or hands-on based. So, you know, the, the schools had to really do some shuffling with schedules to fit all of us into all of these labs um, so that we can all get the requirements we need and stay on track for our licenses. Um, so like, you know, for example, the small craft construction lab, it's run twice a week, but there's uh, two classes 
every morning just to get us all through because they can only fit you know six of us in a in the space at a time um so yeah it's it's difficult but it's it's amazing how well it works out um you know especially hiking up and down the hill between our core classes and our labs on the waterfront because that's where we spend all of our time but uh yeah it's it's, it's amazing as a fresh it's the only thing i've known so looking forward to maybe a little bit more calm <laughs> it's coming it's coming we don't know when but it's definitely coming i thought ryan you were for sure going to mention how easy scuba has been in the pandemic talk about I, a perfectly suited activity i i actually don't scuba but thank you ah oh did i mix you up oh no yeah uh <laughs> I, I gave up bubbles uh, about six years ago i uh i, I, I free dive so ah, I, hold, okay. I hold my breath See, it's still well suited. I yep. stick with it. Yep. But anyone else have any other thoughts about life in a COVID semester? Otherwise, I say we wrap it up. I know Kate's got some good questions. I did want to add um, that one of my favorite activities on campus is uh, attending the simulator that we have, the navigational simulator in BIW. Um, I actually work there. I've been working there since freshman year. Um, and ever since COVID started, um, they haven't had anyone in there, um, like out of class or out of um, like our normal hours for classes, but uh, typically four to six, Monday through Thursday, just like I was mentioning supplemental seamanship. Um, mainly during the spring semester, the sim lab is open to be able to come down, uh, get any experience driving um, any kind of boat that you'd like to uh, try in any of the sea areas that we can put up. And I know that because of COVID, now that it's all shut down, um, I have my, a few friends and I um, are pretty antsy for that to open back up completely so that we can actually go back to our mock scenarios of docking boats and ships and everything. Um, but that was one of the things that I, uh, that we were all bumming about uh, COVID shutting down, but hopefully we'll be able to get that back up and running by next semester. That simulator is pretty fantastic and we can't wait to share it with everybody um, when we're able to get, get the outside world um, back in there. Um, I wanted to transition a little bit in terms of campus life and the clubs and activities or sports teams. And um, those of you that are here on campus as students, kind of step back into the shoes of a prospective student. Think about um, reading down the list of clubs and organizations. What would be the process if there was um, not the club or the organization that a prospective student would want? Um, could they make one? How is that process? Um, is there something for everybody here or um, are we only locked into what we've got? Um, I saw Corey, you shaking your head. I'm going to throw it to you first. Yeah. Uh, so my sophomore year, there was a group of friends, a group of my friends and I, and I that over Christmas break, we all decided to kind of challenge ourselves and get our ham radio license, which, you know, you don't really hear much about anymore these days, but um, especially the, uh, as, as a decky, as a marine transportation major. Uh, there's there's a class that, that I had to take, and I think if Nick's not in it now, then he's he's a, uh, then he already took it. But it, it's it the now. same thing. It's yeah, it's the same thing. It's uh, it's it's an FCC exam, and you you get you get a a license to be able to operate through the class. You operate uh, you operate the marine uh, band radios, but we want to do the short the shore side thing and get our ham radio license, which uh, we all did. Uh, some of us it took more than one. Uh, test to pass, but uh, there were four or five of us that that passed over over Christmas break, and we actually started the club back up. Uh, it was it was inactive for about ten years, and there's a, a lot of current students don't even know there's there's a uh, a closet upstairs in the fourth floor of Curtis Hall that when we found it was covered in cobwebs and had all kinds of radio equipment, uh, high frequency, medium frequency. Uh, just a ton of a ton of stuff and then a, an inoperable uh radio repeater that the school actually repaired for us to be able to use as a, as a club again 
So the, the process was a little challenging because you have to petition the student government uh, to allocate funds if you need a startup. So like we needed that, that repeater operational to be able to function as a club. Uh, but if you're, if you're interested enough and you, and you really want to do it, it's not that hard of a process if, if that's what piques your interest. Yeah, that's great. It just means that um, if the, you have the interest, you can see that and keep going with it. Um, I just wanted to mention we have about 10 minutes left in until eight o'clock. Um, those of you that are watching, please feel free to throw in any of those questions into the Q&A. Um, our students are answering them as fast as they can. Um, so make sure to utilize that for sure. And um, if there's any extra questions as, as we're going along, um, we might be able to stay on for another couple of minutes, but I know these guys have uh, some homework to do. <laughs> you probably do too, watching. Um, can I throw this question back? Um, did anybody want to add to Corey's response in terms of creating clubs? And is that possible? And how is that process? Roxana, you want to take this on as <laughs> um, I can, head of school here? I can speak on it a little bit. Um, clubs are um, based out of SGA. I don't really know how to word that, but the, the clubs have to send in applications to SGA to get clearance to be a club. And you don't have to do much to get clearance to be a club, but they also, um, we have action travel funds and stuff like that. So SGA funds um, projects and activities that the clubs want to do. So you could make your own club and you could, you do not have to spend your own money um, going places and doing things. You can submit um, a request for money to SGA and they can um, send it back to you for more questions or approve it or things like that. So you can get funding for your clubs as well if you want to make a club. Yeah, that's that's an important point. Um, there is some money for you to, to go to where you need to get or to get that equipment um, for what you need to do. So um, there, there are lots of opportunities to create this environment to make it the most enjoyable for you and to get the most out of it. Um, Elizabeth, did you wanted to throw here anything in the last few minutes? I wanted to, I do want to return to next uh, question about the ROTC too, but we can always stay on for another few minutes to wrap that up as well. So, yeah, I was thinking I'd seen a few questions come through about the ROTC. Um, and then I also wanted to sort of open it up to our folks in the regiment, um, just real kind of quick. What was that um, mug experience like? What was RPT like? Um, just for reference, the regimental preparatory training that midshipmen are under guidance until you're formally uh, introduced, whatever the word is, um, into uh, the regiment. So if, if Corey and Nick, if you sort of want to tackle both ends of that, I know Nick, you wanted to talk a little bit about that NROTC. Um, I'm going to um, add in a portion of that question too, in terms of the time commitments that the regiment takes up and the amount of time that you have to do other things outside of the regiment and classroom space and creating that campus environment as well. So, um, Nick, why don't you take it here? <laughs> Putting you on yeah, the so um, uh, I can start with uh, with the regiment real fast. Uh, so, yeah, with um, when you first get here, if you're going for a um, a regimented required major, or you can actually join the regiment. Um, you don't have to uh, pick the majors that uh, require it. Um, it all it looks great on a resume, but when you get here, you'll be experiencing a uh, kind of a, a boot camp uh, scenario where you're going to have strikers who are upperclassmen, and they're going to prepare you for life within the regiment. So, uh, again, it's somewhat of a of a boot camp experience. I think it's. Uh, kind of varies a little bit differently from what me and Ryan probably have dealt with, but, um, <laughs> uh, but it's all to prepare you uh, and turn you into uh, professionals. Um, and I think that, you know, th that's what the school does, you know, regardless of what your major is, you know, the school uh, puts out uh, professionals. Uh, so you'll learn how to maintain a uniform, how to wear it properly. Um, you'll learn facing movements, how to salute. Um, it's very, uh, it's very detailed. Um, it can be a little challenging, but it's you know, it's definitely not impossible. And I encourage um, anyone, you know, if you are if you are interested um, in joining the regiment, I think it's a very worth, worthwhile experience. Um, 
Corey, you want to add anything uh, to that before I mention the ROTC stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with everything Nick said, especially it being a worthwhile experience. Uh, there are a number of people that that join the regiment uh, out of th their own interests that aren't required to via their you know their major and their program here at the academy. Uh, but I, I the regiment the regiment has uh, has definitely I, I've benefited a lot from the opportunities that I've that I've had inside the regiment. Uh, anything from being on the drill team as a freshman and you know being able to get off campus a little bit when when other mugs weren't able to for, for different uh, drill team events to being on training staff, like Nick spoke about. Uh, we, were, we were both uh, strikers, upperclassmen training staff for uh, midshipmen under guidance. Uh, and then my junior year, I was, an, I was an officer in charge for one of the four companies of, uh, of midshipmen under guidance. And all of those, I, I've reflecting on my, my four years here, I've, I've grown quite a bit. So if I could give any advice, it's definitely make the most of the experience, whether you think you're going to enjoy it or not. And if you, if you aren't required to join the regiment, definitely consider it because it, it provides a lot of opportunities. You really don't get anywhere else outside of a, a paramilitary organization or, you know, like what, uh, what Nick and, uh, and I think Ryan, was that his name? What, what they did, uh, you know, joining the military. It's, it's definitely not on par with that, but it gives you a, uh, gives you quite the experience here. That's a great answer. Um, so just to be observant of time, thank you both for that. Um, eight o'clock is right around the corner. Uh, so what I wanted to say is Kate and myself, Elizabeth, we've changed our names to our emails. Please be in touch with us. This is why we're here to answer your questions. I'll throw in the chat again, um, that link to our open house will have a format pretty similar to this and there will be many, many, many more sessions. Um, and then all those recordings will be available. But to our panelists, this is my final kind of question for you. Um, think back to your first year, maybe you're in it right now. What is one item that you were so happy that you either brought along with you to the dorm, to your off-campus living, et cetera, and or one item that, man, you really wish that you brought? I know for the regimental student, Corey, you might not have been allowed to bring the one thing that you really wish you could have, but what? What were you either happy, so happy you brought, or dang, I really wish I brought that with me my first year. Um, I'm gonna start with, ooh, we'll kind of do this differently. We'll start with Patrick. Well, the one thing that I am very happy that I brought freshman year uh, is my mini fridge right here. I saw that that was one of the questions. Um, you are allowed mini fridges. Uh, mine is bigger than others, um, but I, I'm glad that I brought my mini fridge because I, the dining hall closes at six o'clock on weekends um, and we're college students. We stay up later than usual uh, on weekends. And so I like to be able to like store some uh, food in there if I get hungry or like salsa and so that w when I'm hungry, I can have a quick snack. Um, and one thing that I wish that I could have brought up was my car. Um, but I am glad because uh, my freshman year, we didn't have COVID uh, present. So I was able to uh, become friends with some upperclassmen with cars and um, really start to expand my friend group already. Um, and we'd go out driving just in random areas in the, uh, in the area of here um, and explore some very beautiful sites here. So nice. And I will mention, I'm sorry if you're a freshman going into the regiment, no mini fridge for you. <laughs> How about you, Ashlyn? One thing that you are so glad you brought or one thing that you wish you'd brought? Um, well, technically I actually live at home still, so I'm a unique case, but um, this year, one of my friends um, showed me their electric blanket and I don't know how I lived the past three years without one in the colds of Maine. So I, I, that's one thing I would recommend because it gets pretty chilly up here in the winter time. That's awesome. Thank you. How about you, Amber? Uh, I don't know, honestly. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, my freshman year, my roommate and I both each had our own fridge. Um, so we had plenty of storage for food. Um, and actually both of us were athletes. So she was on the soccer team with me my freshman year and then I was also a swimmer. So there were many nights when we would be getting back and the two of us would get the munchies after practices or whatever. And it was nice to kind of have that food in there, but 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. How about you, Sarah? Um, I, <laughs> I'm always like studying and working at my desk. So one thing that I got freshman year that it, it was a bit of an investment, but I think it was great, uh, is a stand-up desk. Um, like a, not like an entire desk, but you can get it on Amazon where it's like a, it's on like a spring system. So you can, when you're not using it and sitting down, it's, it's just a little bit higher. Um, but it's great. Cause if you're just sitting at your desk all the time, it can, it's not good for your, for you. So, um, that was one thing I was very grateful. I brought, I don't know. I think this is going to sound kind of weird, but, uh, like, uh, something I wish I brought that I didn't was, uh, like a nice microwavable allowed mug uh, simply because, you know, with all the cool snacks and stuff that you can find and make in your dorm, I didn't have a mug to put it in. And I know that sounds crazy. You know, why not a bowl? Um, but you can put a lot in a mug. And so. Soups, yeah. hot chocolate, Soup. tea. Soup. I get it. Nice. Thank you. How about you, Corey? Yeah, so on, on the uh, opposite end of the spectrum with uh, Ashlyn there, she said about a heated blanket. Curtis Hall also has the uh, tendency to get really hot, so I was really glad I brought a, an oscillating fan, which, which mm -hmm. is one of the allowed items for regimental freshmen. That was a lifesaver in Castine in August because, believe it or not, it, it's, it's pretty hot here in the summer. Nice. I like the spectrum. Nick, you're up next. Uh, for me... Um, I was coming. Oh, you muted yourself. We'll never know. Sorry. No, my dog is right here and she just like laid down on the laptop. Um, <laughs> I love it. No, so, uh, for me, I kind of wish I brought, uh, I was coming in from California. So I was moving, uh, quite a distance, even though I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but, um, I wish I had more of my camping stuff. Um, I, again, I, I very much enjoy the outdoors. Um, and I, I've managed to get some of it back from my parents, uh, but, you know, um, I kind of wish I had that first year just when I was outdoors. Um, for what I would uh, say, uh, I would honestly, you know, I would kind of say that, you know, for what you, especially for the regiment students, for what you're allowed, you know, bring stuff that you can take outdoors with you. Um, I would say if you can get yourself a good pair of binoculars, definitely do so because they're great on cruise when you're on the train ship uh, or when you go out cadet shipping. And also just the wildlife around here at Castine. You'll see some bald eagles. You'll see some sa some seals. Um, you know, a whole bunch of wildlife. So they definitely come in handy. And uh, real fast, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to the Rossi question, but I can leave my email if that helps. Perfect. Thank you. Ryan? Um, yeah, one thing I kind of wish I had up here was my workshop. Um, I had to leave that behind and all of my all of my fun tools, but uh, kind of like a consolation prize is, um, you know, once you get familiar with all the stuff down on the waterfront, they've got a bunch of fun tools down there. So I tend to spend a lot of time down there just putzing around on projects um, for myself and for the Bowden. And uh, so that kind of you know, relieves that itch a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's the one thing I wish I was able to bring. Um, yeah. Perfect. Ryan, Thank I you. think that was a great thing to add in terms of the waterfront. Not only do the boats have that accessibility, but in terms of the um, workshop, the machine shop, the welding shop, our students um, produce some really cool presents. <laughs> for their families. Um, so depending on what your interest is in and um, what classes that you've been able to take to get familiar with that equipment, um, our waterfront crew really helps you guys through those projects. Um, and so whether it's doing something for a particular vessel like the Bowdoin or for your own personal use, um, they are always there to, to help out getting you on the water or doing projects um, on, on shore. So it's, yep. it's an amazing resource. Yeah, one of the things, uh, one of the guys on, on the waterfront is helping me make right now is uh, I'm actually building a, um, a cantilevered standing desk. Nice. So it's, 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 you know, it's, uh, it's got its own weights in it and there's no motors, no springs or anything. So you push the little button, raise it, lower it, but uh, yeah, building that in the shop on campus. 
Can That's you awesome. Those, Ryan. <laughs> I know. Tell a few of them. We'll take two. Once you get the admissions. template made, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. The last one that we have, uh, Roxy. What's one thing that uh, you are super happy about, or one thing that you wish that you'd brought? One thing I'm super happy that I brought, um, probably a shower caddy. People don't talk about it as much as they should. You should definitely bring a shower caddy. Um, it just keeps your stuff nice and organized when you have to share bathrooms. And something I wish I brought, um, a memory foam mattress to put on top of um, the mattresses in Curtis Hall. They are a little hard sometimes. So um, a lot of my friends would bring, you can get them as thick as you want. Um, it definitely makes it a lot more comfortable. If you like comfort, if you like a hard bed, then you should be fine. But Perfect. Those are all great answers. I uh, am actually pretty impressed how many Q's and A's that we blasted through. So thank you to everybody who posed a question. Thank you to all of our incredible panelists who multitasked. They were able to answer verbally and, you know, type in with their super fast fingers. So I think that worked out really well. Kate, did you want to add anything here at the end? No, I mean, I, I think the takeaway from this um, is that our students do some really unbelievable stuff, put themselves in leadership positions, um, whether it's from working with our local fire department. Um, Corey, can you tell us how many students from the academy are on the department or in the department? Uh, yeah, so we, we have a uh, roster of about uh, 25 and I'd say uh, 18 of the members, uh, you know, 25 active members, 18 of them are MMA students. That's so incredible. what you don't know is that we're all super safe in the summer when they are on <laughs> boats. <laughs> the rest of us who live here. Um, so that so there's getting involved with the fire department to the waterfront, um, to student government, to environmental clubs and making a difference on campus and off campus, to getting engaged with sports teams. Um, so there is a lot going on. Although we're a small campus with just less than a thousand students, our students do really cool stuff. Um, any parting words of advice? I know you guys have homework. So um, it looks like we are, the last two questions are getting typed out right now. So I'm not gonna shut it down just so we can make sure to get everybody their answers. Um, Nick Lewis has put his email address out for any ROTC questions. Um, so definitely reach out to him or Elizabeth or myself um, so that we can, get you the information you need. Um, and again, open house is Saturday, April 3rd. It's in the afternoon from two to 6 p.m. Um, Eastern time. There will be other sessions similar to this where it'll be a collection of students gathered on Zoom to answer questions. Um, so that's another chance to pre-submit some questions um, that we can get answered for you. And all of those sessions will also be recorded. So. Definitely throw anything that you want answered our way. Um, we'll get what we need covered um, for you. And so there's a variety of topics from academics to um, student panels to ROTC. There's an entire ROTC section to the regiment to um, purely athletics and purely clubs and organizations. So um, please join us for that. I have put that link in the chat. And um, we hope to see you guys here soon. Um, and it looks like, yep, so uh, the questions have been answered. Will people be visiting campus for tours? Um, okay, so there is the one last question. Um, yep. This is a good question. Yeah. It's a hard one to answer. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. So the question is, will, will students, prospective students be able to get into buildings um, for future tours? We don't know the answer to that yet. Um, we are really hoping uh, at the moment, the goal is to get our current students through the rest of the semester um, so that they can get out on those vessels, get sailing, um, go on their co-ops without too many other blips what the summer and what next fall will hold, I don't know. Um, but once we do know, we will be sending out those emails and that communication. 
so that you can be sure to um, put that on your calendar and come back and visit again. But um, we're asking some of our students to do take student takeovers on social media. So if you haven't already, check out our Facebook, which is Maine Maritime Academy Admissions, or our Instagram, which is Maine Maritime Academy Admissions. And um, we're posting as many photos of inside our lab spaces and our buildings as possible. Um, so, We'll be your eyes. Uh, we will sorry be that eyes. we can't get you in there ourselves, but yeah. we'll, we will as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we are just as excited to show you our hands-on lab spaces. Um, words are pretty, but a picture is worth a thousand of them. So we want to get you in there. Um, but yeah, with that said, uh, thank you all so much for joining us tonight, for sticking it out for these 10 extra bonus minutes. Um, we hope to see you at Open House April 3rd. And with all that, I would say. Yeah. Thank you we'll to see you all soon. the panelists, too. You guys have lots on your plate. Um, have a good one. Study up, everybody. <laughs> You'll make it through. <laughs>